Well, welcome to the Speak With People podcast. My name is Jason Rates, and I'll be your host today. Thank you so much for joining us at this podcast. On this podcast, we believe that words matter, and healthy communication is oxygen for our relationships and our leadership. So whether you communicate one-on-one or on a team, from a stage or from behind a screen or a microphone like I am right now, we want to challenge you today to choose to communicate in healthy ways because we really believe that your world will change for the better when you do. Well, today we are taking this uh, 2023 uh, very seriously because we have a string of guests that are so incredible. And I've just, I've been looking forward to today's podcast episode for a while. And so we just have leaders who are on the front line of communication, uh, whether they're communicating to their teams or from a stage. And so we just cannot wait to learn from them. So today's communicator, today's leader, today's podcast guest is someone who I have known for a very long time, 25 plus years. This leader has been a mentor, a friend, a strong voice of encouragement, a challenge in my life. And I'm so grateful for him. We'll tell you more about uh, some of the insider stories in a minute, but I'd like to welcome Terry Prisk to the Speak With People podcast. Welcome, Terry. Hey, Jason. Great to be with you. And it's been 25 good years. 20? Uh, and I'm not just saying that. It is <laughs> uh, as iron sharpens iron, so the countenance of a friend sharpens a friend. And guess what? That's happened. And uh, I always enjoy interaction with you. Ah. Well, thank you very much. I uh, I appreciate that. And so before we get started, maybe you could tell us just a little bit about yourself, uh, what you do, your family, a little bit of your story. Yeah, well, I'm from the great state of Michigan, and a lot of people, they get uh, bummed out if they don't get enough sun. And I'm in a state here in Michigan right now, a state of mind where I'm not in good condition because we do not have enough snow. <laughs> so that may sound a little crazy, but I do like the mitten state. And being also from the state of Michigan, uh, being a U of M fan who absolutely we had we relish what took place with Ohio State. And That's you can right. relate to that because you used to live in Michigan. That's right. But uh, I have a great family, uh, a phenomenal wife, and uh, our kids get a lot of credit for being good kids. And I credit that to her uh, in so many ways. Uh, three boys and a girl. They all live locally. And right now, um, I'm the... Uh, my title is founding pastor of Grumlaw Church. And right now my role is uh, to support the team here, but I'm on the speaking team, uh, still that. And that's one of the reasons why we talk, but as you already communicate, speaking isn't just on a platform. It can be on a screen like this, or it can be in a Costco. It can be in a supermarket. It can be at a gas station. and. Our words really do matter. Hmm. Uh, one of the things that we talk about often when we're together is uh, what's your mission? What's your goal? And one of the things that I'm working on right now, whether I'm walking into a store, an athletic event is, am I exuding joy to other people? Hmm. And am I pulling that out of other people? That's and that's good. based on a mission. You and I for years have talked about uh, what is our purpose? What, of our, what is our mission? And my mission statement is this, is to influence the largest number of people because of the one who influenced me. And when you're connected with Christ, then guess what? Uh, you want to expose yourself to people because of the transformation that Christ has put in our life. So that's a little bit about me. I speak, uh, I work with leaders. Uh, I'm doing a lot of coaching with leaders right now. And every day I get up, like you, you walk, I walk, I run. Uh, the idea is, God, where do you, where can you use me today? And wherever I'm going, that's where I can be used. Huh. I love that. You don't just run. Like you you have done a string of years with how many marathons? Like half marathon. I mean, you just you've well, kind of done it all. Well, I, I don't do the full marathons. I'm a wimp. Uh, I do half marathons. Uh, only yeah, thirteen point two is nothing. <laughs> yeah, but last year during the training season, since you asked that and not in a braggadocious way for a sixty eight year old bald guy, uh, 
uh, during the training season, I put in about uh, 743 miles. Goodness. And uh, th- that is, th- that's incredible time um, to reflect. It's incredible time uh, to respond. It's, it's an incredible time to be with people. And one yep. of the great things uh, with what you're doing with this podcast and what you're doing with the upcoming conference that's coming the truth is there's a lot of encouraging words that you communicate to people out on the running trail Yep. Uh, because there are people that are going, I can't do this. I won't be able to do this. And just coming alongside of them, uh, encouraging them and letting them know that it's a marathon uh, and just take another step. Yep. And if you're neutral or taking steps back, and just letting them know that over the course of time, you're going to be so much farther ahead and mentally, socially, physically, spiritually with putting this act of discipline in your life. That's right. So one other thing, just, you know, talk about your life for a second. I'm just curious. I first heard you speak for the first time. It, w- it was probably the mid nineties. It was at a, a big youth event in Metro Detroit area. How long? I mean, I, if you don't want to say the number, that's fine, but I just think of like your experience when it comes to being a speaker and communicator. I mean, it's, it is, I mean, it's decades. You've been standing on a stage communicating to help people. Like how long do you think it's been? Oh, uh, it's, it's 40, 45 years. Wow. Wow. I love that. Well, uh, (laughs) you and I kind of really first met for the first time because you taught a segment in one of the classes at my college on speaking. And I'm not just saying this. I mean, we go way back. So I'm just not saying this to, you know, blow smoke or anything. But like for the first time in my college career, you know, my like I came alive because I'm like, this is how I want to communicate. This is what's sure. passionate. And so I think I think you gave me an A minus. So I was very happy because biology and math and those things, I, I wasn't coming close to an A minus. So <laughs> well, today's podcast, we want to dive into this concept of speaking challenging words into people. Uh, we all are in situations in life and our relationships where well, there are moments, especially when the foundation's been built in a relationship, or if you're a leader and you lead a team, or if you're a team member and you're, you know, kind of leading up or down or to the side. But there comes those moments where you've got to speak challenging words in, into people to push them, to challenge them, to call them out, uh, and to call them up to greater things and moments. So, Terry, I, I just wanted to ask, when did you really figure this out about your own leadership, that you could be the type of leader who was doing just that, you know, speaking those challenging things, pushing, you know, put, putting the putting it out there that people could, you know, achieve more, push more, level up, you know, succeed more, all that kind of stuff. Well, you know, this may be an interesting response because the epiphany would be, uh, okay, the pot of gold or the epiphany may be, oh, uh, I had this spiritual experience and God spoke to me or a mentor breathed into me. But I'm going to respond in a way that I don't know that you and I have ever discussed before. I believe when I began to see that there was power in how I could encourage people, motivate people, uh, have people go beyond, really came from the negative. Mm. And so let me give you an example of this. Um, I coached soccer for like 17 years. Wow. And uh, I'm I'm a passionate guy. I'm an intense kind of guy. um, uh, I like to motivate people. And uh, there was a particular game, and anybody who coaches knows this, if you coach athletics, you've got to stand up for your players. You've got to stand up for your team. And sometimes you have to let your, uh, let the official know. And I didn't use colorful language, but let me tell you, if I didn't like a call, I let it be known. And on a particular, (laughs) in a particular game, my uh, assistant coach and I were lighting up this one official. And I saw this individual literally wilt on Uh. the field and i said this cannot be and i'm not kidding you i literally went up to 
that official that was, by the way, a teenager, <laughs> and I apologize, sure. I went to my assistant coach and said, this will never happen again. Mm. And I called up the head of the soccer league, let, league and let them know what had happened and said, if this ever happens again, I'm not coaching anymore. Mm. So there's a way to communicate what you're not happy about. But as it says in 1 Corinthians 16, you have to do it with love. And notice I didn't say there about the love chapter. It right. says, be strong, be courageous, be bold, but do everything with love. And so it was through some experiences like that. I'm naturally a passionate guy going, I have the ability to lift someone up or absolutely destroy them with my words. Mm. And I be, I've seen it happen where I've said, wait a second, whether with a staff member or with somebody on the street, I'm not going to back away from speaking truth. I'm not going to become uh, a chameleon, but the way you say it and your choice of words. Years ago, I went to a seminar and we were encouraged to be a wordsmith. Choose your words. Think through your words. So like you and I, when we're preparing for a talk, the words we choose to use that we practice before we give a presentation can make the difference of it being a good talk yep. or a great talk of literally penetrating or people going, eh, no big deal. Yep. And so for me, it's been a progression. And the older I get, I, going back to that mission statement, want to say this. I want to be a positive influence in people's lives, even when I need to confront them. We have a staff member right now who's in the position of HR. And this person can literally have a person resign or release them. And after it's done, they're still buddies. That uh. is a person who knows how to use their words wisely. That's right. And so for me... It's an attitude of saying, how can I encourage my wife? How can I encourage my kids? How can I encourage my grandkids? How can I be a positive influence? Like here, here's one, because right now some people are going, well, I'll never speak or I'll never be on a stage like Jason Rates. I'm never going to put together a speaker's conference. But the thing is, what about when you're walking through a grocery store and the guy who's making minimum wage and you can see, I'm not being judgmental here, they're not going to have the capacity to ever be the manager, but you can walk by and say, Hey, Josh, you're doing a great job. Yeah. And the guy looks yeah. up like, how did you even know that my name was Josh? And it's like, okay, he's got a name tag, but that guy all of a sudden goes like this and goes, you notice me and go, Josh, you're doing a great job, man. And so I, and I understand some of the introverts are going to freak out right now. Do it within your own gift mix. Do it within yep. your own temperament traits. But every place we go, we can be a positive influence on everybody we come in contact with. That's right. And right now I'm going, probably your producers, whatever, going, God, is this guy getting jacked up or something? No, I believe this. <laughs> yeah, I really do. For sure. For sure. Well, I've known you a long time, and I can attest to that. That, that. That's who you are as part of your DNA. It's amazing. I mean, you brought up, <clears throat> you know, your your example with the soccer. Like, I, I coached Little League for, geez, 10 years. I mean, it's amazing some of the things that parents or coaches, you know, how, how they just spoke to other coaches or other players or, you know, the umps or the refs. I mean, every day we have this tremendous responsibility to choose our words. I was thinking back to, you know, that, that time in college where you came in and we you know, we're kind of teaching about speaking and I do remember this. I don't know if you remember this, but you know, after it was said and done, you know, we had to present our talk and then you critiqued us and people were leaving the classroom that day and you pulled me aside and you're like, listen, you know, you have a gift for this type of stuff. I'm not saying that in, in an arrogant, prideful way and all that. No, but, no it's not arrogant. It's but I, who you are. But you, you like spoke to me in a way that, you know, up until that point, I really hadn't taken it seriously. I just knew that I loved to communicate in front of people. I could not wait, but I hadn't taken it seriously. And you spoke in such a way that day and challenged me where I was like, okay, now I have, now I have to be able to do something with this. Uh, I, I have to, you know, I have to do that. 
you know, speaking to leaders, Terry, how would, what advice would you give them, you know, when it comes to living that type of life as a leader? Like, how do you look for those situations in younger leaders to speak challenging words into them? Is there something that you just go about? Is, is there something that you, you know, have kind of honed in on over the years, but what do you look for when you, you know, you do speak those challenging, those encouraging things? Um, All right, I'll give a couple examples and then I will give you uh, something that happened to me when I was in grad school, when I was in seminary, seminary, uh, that that absolutely changed my life. Um, We have a value around here that is assume the best. So as a leader, I believe we have a responsibility to be intentionally looking at what does someone have to contribute? Yes. So rather than looking at what you're going to accomplish, look at what can be accomplished in someone else and look at the value that they bring. Now, let me, let me go back to this. Um, uh, I read a book uh, a couple of years ago um, uh, where, where you go, I see this in you. Uh. I can see that you do this. Yep. I see that you would enjoy doing this. So let's say, for instance, in a church setting, a ministry setting, we need volunteers. I think one of the worst things that can ever happen is this, where we go, hey, we need somebody over here. Will you do it? Well, how motivational is that? Right. Well, versus if we've taken the time to make observations about people, we've seen them uh, in just their living, some of their positive natural characteristics are going to come out. Yep. So then if you say, I see this in you, would, could you help us out here? Because I could see that you could bring great value here. That's different than just signing some pe- person up. But let me yep. tell you where this came from. Back when I was in grad school, uh, I, I was getting my master's degree. I walked by a girl uh, and I'll, I'll say her name. I won't give her last name. Uh, she's married now, but her name was Michelle. And I said, Michelle, uh, how are you doing today? And she said, um, I'm doing all right. I walked a little bit, came back, back, and I said, uh, Michelle, no, seriously, how are you doing? I can tell something's the matter. And th- this is emotional for me to communicate even right now. It's still emotional for me. Uh, she looked at me and she said, Terry, I'm having a really crappy day, but I would not share with you one bit what it is because you wouldn't take the time to listen. Uh. That changed my life. Wow. Wow. Because what I found was, is I always, I spent too much time talking and not listening. Yeah. And you know what? That was a spirit of pride. And there, that changed my life in this sense. When I'm out with people, uh, if I'm on a 50-minute appointment, it's a personal challenge of mine that I'm only going to speak for, I don't know, 10 minutes. I almost want people, and they do this, going, hey, wait a minute. We're not leaving this appointment. I haven't asked anything about you. (laughs) Right. So how does that answer your question? Look at the interest of others. Yeah. Look how you can build them up because then you're creating teams, you're creating momentum. And when you bring value to somebody else as a leader, you're going to find value. And you're not doing it for that reason. You're just doing that because isn't that servant leadership? So that whole idea of listening, and if you're listening, you're watching, and then all of a sudden you go like this and you say, hey, I see this in this person, and I want to be used whatever piece of that puzzle I am in that person's life of the puzzle of life to help them become everything that God wants them to become. Does that make sense? Yeah, very much so. Very much so. That's huge. I want to go back to what you said in the very beginning of it because it's so profound so many people, they would get such freedom in life or be able to breathe so much better in their relationships if they just assumed the best. We, we just go into this immediate shutdown of they didn't text me back or they didn't like my post 
or I called them and they didn't return my call and they immediately go to, I assume the worst. Well, they must have done this. They must be ghosting me. They must have that. But I have found over the years, 70, 80% of all that worry I put into assuming the worst, it, it, it didn't go anywhere. I mean, because I should have because just- Because it wasn't even- it wasn't even true. It was all fabricated in my mind. And that's Absolutely. so so huge to just assume the best. Like if we if we can get to that place, it's such a healthy place for our lives and our communication. I mean that that's just a huge part of it. But that is a that is a paradigm shift because in the culture in which we live in today, we are bombarded with the worst not the best case scenario. Yep. We are absolutely deluged with the negatives. So it's so easy in our minds to go there that we're already going down the path of destruction when it could be, whoa, 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 we can divert this with other people and help them see that they shouldn't be going in that direction. Yeah, exactly. And what you just said, people already assume the worst so much. So if we sit down with them and our whole plan and agenda is to speak a challenge or an encouraging word, so often they're like already like got their defenses up because they they already assume that we want to come at them with something that we're disappointed or upset with or whatever. It's like, oh my goodness, if we could just get back to a place where, you know, even if you're sitting down with me to give me constructive criticism, you know, I listen, you know, I'm, I'm open handed, my ears are open, I'm taking what I can learn from it and, you know, doing the best with it. But I mean, it's just, and that's your other point of just listening. I mean, how often, you know, especially we live in a, a world and a society today where, you know, we are driven by, I've got to get my agenda, my thoughts, you know, I've got to put them out there. I got to comment and everything, but if we could just back up and slow down a little bit, listen, and then truly, you know, take all of that information and then present, oh my goodness, the good we could do with our words is just incredible. Yeah. And when, when, it, it's it's listening to the person, and I know you're a man of faith. It's it, it's listening to the spirit of God. Uh, I had something happen pre-pandemic. Uh, well, right when the pandemic was um, uh, taken off, and you know funerals were crazy, and uh, I, I got involved in uh, a, a, a funeral and a high community guy, and um, I had never met the guy. Family wanted me to do the funeral. And the Lord spoke to me. I, I said, how am I going to go in and minister to these people? And like, what am I going to say? And it was like, whoa, 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 whoa. And there's three words, uh, four words that start with L that I walked away with. And I've been practicing this in my life. Listen, learn, love, and then lead. Uh. That's I'm a good. leader. Yeah. I always want to lead. Yep. And then those other things fall. No, 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 no. I'm a better leader when I listen to the promptings of God. When I listen to people, I'm going to learn from God through a multiplicity of ways. I'm going to learn from those people. Now I know how to love them. And now I can lead. That has really change the way I walk into situations, which goes back to this, then I'm going to have the words to communicate that are going to build people up, even if it's a tough situation. But sometimes people say to me, they say to you, uh, and this is, this is so applicable to what we're talking about today. What do you do when you go into a hospital room? I go, I don't know. Well, what do you mean you don't know? You go into them all the time. What do you do when you're there with a family with cancer? I go, I, I, I'm, I, I, I don't know. I walk in and I listen. Yeah. Sometimes we cry. Sometimes we'll pray. Sometimes I don't say anything. I just hold the patient's and the wife's hand. Just yep. encourage them. Yep. Because we think we have to say something 
And sometimes we say really stupid things versus going, maybe right. the greatest thing we can say is through our nonverbal, I love you, I care for you, I'm feeling what you're feeling, and this is the craps right now. Right. So, wow. I don't know. I, I, I think back, uh, it was probably 2012, you and I were sitting at a Coney Island, and I was catching up with you, and... I, I had been doing some speaking and some traveling and you were kind of asking some questions about what I was doing in the next season of life. And you put out there that day, you're like, I really, I really think you got what it takes to plant a church. Like, have you thought about planting a church? And <laughs> it was, it was crazy. Cause I'm like, well, are you looking into my, you know, my thinking and my brain? Because I had been thinking about planting a church and not knowing, could I do it? Do I have what it takes? Is that way past, you know? And we spent the last bit of that lunch. I mean, you just really challenging me to look into it and go down that road. Do you think that when we speak these challenging words or we, you know, we, we try to take this part of these relationships, they're so much better? Like for you and I at that point, we had a long past, you know, we had built lots of trust, you know, with each other. Can that happen on the other end as well, you know, to where I don't, I don't know someone as well, but I can see that there's greatness in them. I can see that there's something else, uh, you know, can those challenging words be as profound or is it only as profound because like you and I had that past? What, what do you think about that? I think, I, I think it, it, it's both categories. What we have today yeah. in our culture, which I believe is a problem is we are so, uh, when we're face to face with people like that setting, I still remember the booth that was in that that's not too far from here. Yep. Um, we say things in social media that we would never say to a person face to face. Right. But right. face to face, so often we don't want to offend somebody that we don't speak truth. I believe we need to when if our intentions are right, we're being moved by God. We've um, uh, we're, we're saying, God, I want to be on your agenda today. I believe we have every responsibility to speak truth with love into people's lives. Yeah. Now, in your case, it was, okay, I breathe that into you. You went and did that. I was part of the process, as they say in Canada, process. <laughs> I was part of the process of um, uh, seeing that come to fruition, what God did there, what God is doing there. Okay, the whole 10 yards. At other times, I may not be the one to see it, but if I'm being obedient and doing the right thing at the right time in the right way, then yes, people need to hear it. People need to be challenged. Show me a life that is comfortable and I won't show you, a, I'll show you a life that isn't moving forward. Wow. Wow. Absolutely. And I think... As iron sharpens iron, like I said at the beginning, as iron sharpens iron, so the the, the countenance, the relationship of, of a friend sharpens another friend. Yep. There's different levels of relationship, but if I'm if I'm sitting down eating with someone and I see potential in them, of course, because I want them to be the best version of themselves yep. that they can be. Yep, absolutely. I want them to move forward. Because you show me a person that isn't moving forward, I'll show you a person that isn't satisfied with their life, and they're picking the lint out of their navel. It's, it, 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 oh, I, I, where did that come from? I don't know. But there's people who kind of live like that, where do, 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 yep. rather than going, what am I going to get up, and how am I going to live my life today? Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's huge. Have you been uh, in those situations where you've had that, time where you've spoke into them, challenged them, and then it just really went the opposite than, than you thought. The person wasn't receptive. They maybe got defensive, you know, uh, you know, any come to mind where you're of like, course. Ooh, yeah, of course. And you know what a lot of people do when that happens? Well, then I'm not going to do it again. But right. see, if, if we're going to speak what what this podcast and what you are propagating, which I stand behind, I believe in, that conversation that maybe went sideways isn't done there. I have a responsibility as the leader 
yep. to pick up the phone, schedule another appointment and go, hey, can we go over this again? Maybe there was a misunderstanding. Maybe I was a dipstick in the way I said something and I need to clear that up. Yep. Or maybe that person um, did not have the capacity to receive what needed to be received. And maybe with a little additional coaching, they go, I would have never taken that step. And that is causing me to face some issues in my life that I didn't want to face. But if I'm going to move forward, I need to face. Yep. yep. I mean, I think of the times that guy, you know, this, this, this is the thing that's amazing. When we're, when we're approached, when we're confronted, when we're presented with something that we don't want to hear, what's the, nat uh, the natural reaction? That person didn't talk to me right. That person did. Yep. And to literally dissect what the person didn't do versus going, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I've done that before. Now, when people approach me it with something that I don't want to hear, it's making me feel uncomfortable. Like, don't you know me? I go like this, I go, there's always some truth. What do I need to pull out of this right now? Yep. So it's that follow-up, which again is though are those encouraging words to go back and say, you know, that may have hit you hard, but let's unpack this a little bit because I see that if you deal with this, you're going to be able to, this door is going to open. This opportunity is going to come. Yep. You're going to be, um, uh, enhancing your giftedness that you may not even realize you have. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's so, it's just so valuable and so important. If we do these things as leaders, what you've laid out when it gets to that moment where we can speak, you know, that challenge or that truth into them. I mean, whew, that, that could be one of those like, moments you look back at and go, okay, it was in that booth that day. I mean, it changed everything. It changed my life. It changed the direction of everything. It was just huge. Do you have any type of uh, internal checklist? You know, you're sitting there listening, you know, you got to have a challenge, you know, is there just like a, a couple of, you know, checks on the checklist to go, okay, nope, uh, this happened, this happened, this happened, kind of gave me some freedom to say what I need to say. No, um, you know, I don't know if everybody who's listening to this, uh, you, you know, I know that there's people who maybe don't have a faith walk, but uh, using language that would be used in a church, but I'm not minimizing that, nor am I apologizing by that. I, I, I walk in the spirit. Yeah, I walk in the spirit. Uh, so uh, when I say that, let me give you an example. Uh, based upon what we've already uh, what we've already said here, um, I, I may have my to-do list, but let, let me give you something that happened at the beginning of the pandemic. I was just putting in miles. I was just putting in miles. Didn't matter um, uh, where I was running, how I was running. And I was running in front of a, a, a store, a grocery store, and I was down at the west end of the store. And there was just like this little voice that said, turn around and go back in front of the store. Hmm. All right. Well, I don't care. That day I was put in four or five miles. I don't care if I'm going to run around that store 72 times. <laughs> so right. I go back in front of uh, the store and go to the other entrance to get into the store. And a lady walks out and literally goes, Terry Prisk, what are you doing right here? I need you to pray for me now. <laughs> so what am I saying by that? I may have an agenda when I'm sitting down with someone of where I think it can go and we may accomplish that, but there may be something that internally says for whatever reason, maybe what you were going to present, the way you were going to present it with the way you thought you were going to present it. We're going to do that, but we're not going to do that right now. And then there's other times. Absolutely. This is the Holy grail. Yep. We're going for it today. So I think it's, you have to have enough confidence in yourself, in my case and in your case, confidence in God, and then saying, what a privilege to be used of God to build other people up. Yep. That's the mojo. And but, by the way, that you know, love God, love your neighbor. If we just concentrate on that, and if you love God, you're going to love your neighbor. And if you're loving your neighbor the way you should, you're going to love God. Yep. And if we have that perspective, we'll know when to pull back, 
we'll know when to put the, uh, the pedal to the metal, but we have to have the confidence that sometimes people aren't going to want to hear what needs to be spoken at times. Yep, that's right. Happens. Yep. I don't know. Is this answering your question? That was huge. No, this whole conversation has just been so rich and just really appreciate your heart in helping us because really as leaders, <clears throat> we want to get to that place. I mean, it just, you think about, you know, just for me knowing you all these years, you know, I'm just one leader that you were able to speak into. And I don't know, you know, where my life would have ended up without many of the challenges that you put, you know, in front of me over the years that helped me kind of keep going to that next level or achieving something different or a course correction in my leadership and life. So I'm just, I'm so appreciative of it. Uh, before we let you go, you're have one of we, our uh, speakers. How long have we been? Hasn't it been about five minutes? <laughs> <laughs> yes, but you're one of our speakers at the conference in March, the speakers conference, and I'm excited that you're coming down and, and uh, looking forward to talking to you more about that. But wondered if you could just give an invite, you know, to people listening about why they should be a part of this conference, especially if they're looking to grow in their art and craft of speaking and communicating. Well, you and I have discussed this many times. Uh, if 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 we're not Every time we walk on a stage, every time we're in front of people, we're not working on something, then there's almost the spirit of arrogance that comes in. I was yeah. on a stage the other day in the back, and I was with some people that I'd worked with for a lot of years, and I went like this, and I said, um, do you know that I still get the, the tingles in the stomach? And this one person jerked their head and said, you do? I said, the day that I don't get those little tingles, yep. I'm walking out here with a spirit that is unacceptable of cockiness, of arrogance. Yep. And so let me tell you that why I believe a speaker's conference would be great, even for a guy like you, a guy like me who has spoken for years. I listened to one of my uh, uh, talks the other day, and I almost barfed. <laughs> and the reason is I found that I was using um a lot, um a lot. Yep. And I said, that has to change. So I literally today on the podcast was going, ums have to be reduced. So why am I saying that? There is something about coming around other people that aren't going to judge us, but they're there to help us to make us, to help us be the greatest communicators that we can be. Yes, right. And all of us until the day we're done should be saying, how can I improve in that way? Another thing is this, oh, you can listen to a podcast, but there's something about being together that causes a greater clarity. It causes a greater definition. It causes us to maybe get vulnerable in a way that we wouldn't. And in a setting like the speakers conference, people aren't going to be ridiculed. It's going to be, Hey, that's an observation you've made. We can work on that. How can we assist? So as communicators and leaders, if we ever get to the point that we say, I don't need to learn, I don't have anything to improve in that area. That's a, that's a slip and slide. Yep. So why would I say come? Come so that you can improve because if you improve and become a better communicator off of a stage, one-on-ones with people breathing into them, that's a win for them, a win for you, and a win for whatever cause that's right. you're being a part of. That's right. I love that. I love that. Thank you. Okay. Before we wrap up, before we let you go, I want to ask you just a, a couple of rapid fire questions. So our, you know, our audience can keep kind of keep getting to know you, but uh, rapid fire question. Number one, uh, do you have a, a favorite place that you spoke that just kind of stands out over the years or a favorite venue or a favorite event? Uh, I used to do a lot with the evangelical free church and I would go out and speak at Estes park, Colorado. Oh. And there was something about that. God worked. You're in the center of nature. It, it, it was just a buzz, but like you, Jason, some of the places, a lot of the places I've spoken at, you've spoken at, 
there was one Spring Hill Camps. Yeah. There was just something about Spring Hill Camps in Everett, Michigan, where they just, what I loved was they expected God to work. And guess what? God worked. Yep. And so the moments, the times, the experiences there, but uh, um, a lot of times people say, where was your favorite? And I would respond this way, wherever God had me mm. and wherever I had operative word here, the privilege to speak. That's good. The That's good. I love that. To speak. Second question. Uh, one of the best books you read last year. Um, I'm not, I'm not trying to be spiritual here. God's word, the Bible. Huh. I did something last year uh, that I'll explain to you right now. And I know some people are going to go, oh, duh. <laughs> Probably thought you'd say that. No, 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 no. I made a commitment that when I get up, you know how we're just del- absolutely immersed, absolutely podcasts and yep. uh, news reports. And I, get, I got up in the morning. I read through the Bible a multiplicity of times all the way through the Bible in a year. I've done it from Genesis to Revelation. I've done it from, I've done the chronological. So this past year, I said this, I wonder, I got to challenge myself. I wonder if I can read through the Bible, listen to the Bible in a half a year. Hmm. And I said, before I do anything in the morning, before I respond to a text, before I go to an email, before uh, I do anything, I want to saturate my mind with the greatest book that's ever been written of all time, of all time, of all time, of all time, the Bible. Well, not saying this braggadociously, uh, I didn't do it in six months. I did it in four and a half months. Wow. And I found that my perspective with my wife, with my kids, with those I interacted with and talking about what we've been talking about right here, all of a sudden when I was with somebody and wanted to encourage them, guess what? It wasn't something I had heard from somebody else. It was something from two weeks earlier yep. that I had digested from God's word. Yep. So I said, the greatest leadership book that's ever been written is the Bible. So I've read other books, but I've got to tell you, that was the one. I love it. I love it. Well, I can't thank you enough for joining us today. I mean, this has just been. I noticed you looked over it because you were getting your eye from the producer. Hey, cut (laughs) this thing. Let's go. Let's go. (laughs) No, no. I just appreciate your time so much. And, you know, like I've said to you a a lot, but I'll say it here again. You know, your, your leadership, your words, your life has meant so much to me over all these years. And uh, I'm, I'm excited to see you next month and then the month after that. And so thank you so much for being on the podcast today. Well, thank you for the privilege of allowing me to be here. And I, I mean that sincerely. Appreciate it. Well, before we let you go, podcast listeners, uh, make sure you go to thespeakersconference.com. All the information about our conference, it's just in two months, March 21 and 23 in Clearwater Beach, Florida. If you want to become a a better, uh, more effective, empathetic, captivating communicator and really kind of get into the the, the art and craft of speaking in a way that that you can communicate to where your audience will lean in as you're speaking, we'd love to have you join us. So thank you so much for checking out that website and considering being a part uh, with us at just really a beautiful location and a great time. So thanks again for joining us on the Speak With People podcast. Again, we believe that words matter and healthy communication is oxygen for our relationships and our leadership. So we hope that this podcast helped you, challenged you, encouraged you today to be a person who values, practices uh, healthy communication in their lives. Thanks so much. And we'll see you next week on the Speak With People podcast.